Okie doke. Well, guys, welcome. This is financial accounting. This particular class is dealing with the financial accounting Spiceland book, the sixth edition. And we are starting with chapter one. Now, what I try to do in this class, I try to make this as clear as possible so it won't overwhelm you. Um, and But I do want you to know, if you have questions, please chime in. Please unmute and just say, hey, Nancy, can you... Um, explain this a little better or or I don't understand what you were just saying please help me understand and by the way guys I'd like you to call me Nancy I am that's how I would like U.S. students to um, speak to me you don't need to call me Professor Shoemake or Mrs. Shoemake you just call me Nancy I'm happy with that so guys this chapter is going to be a beginning overview of why we're studying financial accounting. So um, as far as what financial accounting is all about, so many people are scared of accounting because they go, oh, I hate math. I'm going to hate accounting. Well, accounting is numbers and it's really not math per se, but we do use numbers in a format to communicate information to the end user. This particular course, Financial Accounting, is a process that we utilize to measure various transactions and to, to then communicate the events that have happened in a company in the form of financial statements. So why do people need this information? Well, for a whole lot of reasons. The investors wanna decide if they wanna invest in this particular company or creditors, banks may want to look and see, hey, is this something, um, is this a company I want to lend money to? Customers may look and say, um, do I want to work with this customer? Am I going to get my products at the end of the day? Suppliers, managers, employees, competitors, regulators, tax authorities, local communities. Everybody wants information in different facets about various companies. So, we as investors in the public often will invest into companies with your 401k monies or with just after tax um, savings. And so the way in which you decide which company you choose to invest in is often in the form of various financial statements. There are two primary categories in courses that you can take. One is called financial accounting, which is this chap this uh, course you're taking. And this course primarily focuses on how we provide information to people outside of the company, to what we call external users, the public. Managerial accounting, some of you may um, need, have to take that course after this one. Managerial accounting primarily focuses on, on processing information for those individuals making decisions within the company, more detailed information um, for the internal users, the, the employees within the company, where financial accounting is going to be a much more generalized um, communication or information for people outside the company. What we're going to start looking at <clears throat> is <clears throat> with financial accounting, we're going to look at various business activities 
and talk about what, how we measure these various transactions and then how we communicate them to the end user. So guys, just so you know, it's 810 now. Of course, everyone I let in, it, we hit the deadline. Just in the future, just make sure you get here um, before 810, preferably eight, because you'll miss out the, on those 10 minutes. So we're gonna have some questions throughout the, um, the lecture today. Here's gonna be our first one. Which definition below best describes financial accounting? Is it gonna be a process of measuring income taxes owed to the government? Is it a system of maintaining communication with the company's customers and suppliers? Is it procedures designed to enhance the company's image to potential investors? Or is it measuring business activities and communicating them to external parties? What do you guys think? If someone wants to um, just speak out and say A or B or C or D. D. Um, maybe. D. D is correct. Thank you. It is D. It's measuring business activities and communicating them to external parties. You are correct. Now, what about this one? Financial accounting does not deal with which of the following? Measuring a company's economic activity. Yes, it does that. It doesn't provide information to internal users. That is the one thing it does not do. Okay, it prepares financial reports and it communicates financial results to investors. That is correct. It is B, that financial accounting does not provide information to internal users. So how do we go about measuring these business activities? We're gonna take a look at a company, Eagle Golf Academy, and we are going to um, look at how they go about making money. I feel like I have the wrong PowerPoint on. There was another PowerPoint, but we're just going to go with this one right now. So Eagle needs 35000 to get the business going. And in order to get that money, they need to come up with some investors. So they have grandma and grandpa Q that decide to invest 500. Okay. So guys, I'm gonna take a quick second just to pause because we have Stuart who is our accounting tutor coming to class and he is going to um, provide you with some information. Hi, Stuart. I'm wondering if I can share my screen with you. Hi, Stuart. Do you want to unmute? And I'm trying to figure out, can you share your screen? Let me see. Yeah. I'll. Um... It'll stop yours. Yep, yep. I, I stopped mine, but feel free okay. to. Guys, this is Stuart. Stuart is the accounting tutor here at Anoka Ramsey. And someone you're going to want to get to know very well because he's going to help you out in this class. So take over, Stuart. Okay. Um. So as Nancy said, I'm, I'm a tutor for the business division. I work with all sorts of business classes, not just accounting, but accounting is my strength. Um, so if you're stuck on stuff or you, you want to review concepts or prepare for a quiz or a test, I'm your guy. Um, I'm available on campus Monday through Wednesday, 8 to 4, in BN 267. That's the newly remodeled building. I'm also available on Zoom Monday through Friday. Um, Thursdays, I work afternoons and evenings for those people that are busy working nine to five. 
Uh, I'm just going to show you really quick how to make an appointment. If I can, there we go. So later today, I will be putting up. Uh, what are you saying? I, I will be putting up uh, announcements in the um, in your D12 course with a link to this page. Are you seeing the tutor business tutor page? Yes. Okay. So this the link will bring you to this page. And there's four options for you to make an appointment. Um, two of them are via Zoom. So it, any any time I'm available, you can use one of these to make an appointment. So if you wanted a 50 minute appointment, you can see that in a um, little darker are the available dates. These dates should be out about two weeks. And then there's the available times. Um, if you uh, do the 20 minute appointments, you can really only see two days. Because those are just meant for, oh, I'm stuck on this one problem. I need help on it. That's what the quick appointments are for. If it's going to be more involved, go for a 50 minute. Now, you can also do in person, as I said, in BN 267. Um, but you can see here, I'm not available um, tomorrow or Friday. And But you can see early next week, I'm still available for the 50 minute one. Um, and really, that's all you need to know. Once you select a date, so if you were going to pick an appointment 8 a.m. Monday, then you just fill in your name, email. The phone number is only in case there's a technological problem. And for an in-person, there wouldn't be one. But then your star ID, tell me which course. Either give me the name or the number for the course, just so I know. And your instructor, in this case, it'd be Nancy. Uh, and then a couple of things, just making sure you understand that Email emails are going to this email. Probably should use your school email, but whatever you want. And that you get one appointment a day. Um, and then you just click book. Then you'll get an email about it. Now, if you if you book for a Zoom appointment, the email will include the link to my Zoom room that you'll use at the time of the appointment. Um, so like I said, there will be a, a, an announcement being posted in D12 sometime later this morning. I'm still tweaking this system. And probably in the future, there will be some like drop-in times, both in person and online. Might run some review sessions before the midterm, things like that. Um, things I can't help you with, I can't help you take a quiz. Um, some people have asked in the past, but I can help you prepare for it. And of course, I'm not going to just sit down and help you with all your homework. You know, you need to try it first, figure out that, okay, you're not understanding this. That's when you want to come see me. And I think that's all I've got, Nancy. Um, thank you so much. Any questions for Stuart? Okay, Stuart. Um, Yep, thank you. Okay, well, good luck. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, please utilize Stuart, okay? Um, excuse me. Okay, excuse me. So, so getting back to this, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the Grandma and Grandpa Q invest 7,500 into the company. Eagle Eye invests 2,500. Eagle Eye's parents are investing 7,500. Bogey Boy, 5,000, and Sacker the Coach, 2,500. So they have raised $25,000 in uh, that they're issuing stock for, for the company, but they need 35,000. So they will borrow 10,000 from the bank. So as you see, that right there, were business activities 
that this new company engaged in. So what we do is we take activities and we try to, to process it, measure them. So we are familiar and we understand the fact that $35,000 was brought into the company. And so this journal entry, which is our way of communicating for ourselves right now, cash of 35,000 came into the company. And we also know we borrowed $10,000 from a bank and we received stock and we issued stock of 25,000. So the journal entry that we use to measure transactions will be right here. We're showing cash increase 35,000. We're showing a note from the bank, a liability, meaning a liability is something we owe. We have a benefit now that will provide a future sacrifice. We're gonna have to pay it back. And then stockholders equity came in of 25,000. Now, the next thing that happens is, um, this school needs to purchase equipment. And so they purchase some golf carts, some balls, some um, golf clubs. They used 25,000 in cash to purchase equipment. So the way we would measure this transaction is our equipment increased 24,000. And we used cash to purchase this equipment. So our equipment increased 24,000 and we used cash. So our cash decreased 24,000 because we used cash to buy that equipment. So again, what are we doing? We're taking various transactions. Hold on one second. My husband's making coffee here. Just um, we're taking various um, transactions that are occurring and we're trying to measure them. We're measuring them by categorizing them into a specific type of account. And then we're measuring them in the form of money, how much. So in this event, Equipment increased 24,000 and cash decreased 24,000. So now after those two transactions, we see we have cash available of 11 because remember we started with 35 and we've used up 24. So we have 11,000 left in cash. We have equipment of 24,000, so we, we still have 35,000 of resources in the form of cash and equipment. And then we have creditors, the bank that we owe money to, 10,000. And we have investors who have invested in the company of 25,000. So cash and equipment are resources this company has that benefit the company. The claims to those resources, creditors that we owe 10,000 to, and investors who really own the company have invested 25,000 into this company. So as you look at this particular slide, I want you to know it's probably one of the most important things that you are going to be to see today. It's called the accounting equation. <clears throat> We're gonna use this. I still use it guys. I still use it um, when I work most days. The accounting equation states that assets, which are resources, will always equal the liabilities of a company plus 
the stockholders' equity. So the resources that a company has will always equal the liabilities, the creditor's claims, meaning we borrowed money, plus the owner's claims, those who own the company. So our assets in this case so far, are the cash we have of 11,000 and the equipment of 24,000. So our, our total assets are 35,000 and they're made up of two separate accounts right now, cash and equipment. And those assets equal the liabilities, which the bank, we owe 10,000 to, plus the stockholders, 25,000. Do you see the left-hand side assets will always equal the right-hand side, liabilities plus stockholders' equity. It will always balance, and it does now. Our assets of 35,000 equal our liabilities plus our stockholders' equity, which also totals 35,000. Now, of course, this is simple math, but we can also say our assets minus our liabilities will always equal stockholders' equity. All we're doing is just moving that liabilities to the left-hand side. So assets minus our liabilities, of course, will always equal our stockholders' equity. Assets are resources of a company. Liabilities are the creditor's claims to those resources, meaning they lent money to a company that helped us provided a benefit for us, but we owe them something. We need to pay them back. And stockholders' equity are those individuals who own the company, who have a stake in the company. Okay. Now, the accounting equation consists of assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. We've got a couple other items we're going to talk about today. Revenues, expenses, and dividends. Revenues are the sale of products or services to the customers. So in the case of Anoka Ramsey, revenues are earned by students paying tuition to the school. For Target, revenues would be sales of products that customers come in and purchase. A CPA practice, revenues will be the, um, the preparation of income taxes. I'm selling a service to clients. They pay for me to prepare their income taxes or to perform uh, QuickBooks for them or do payroll for them. So the revenues are the services that are provided. The expenses are the cost of selling products or services. So expenses at Anoka Ramsey would be salaries, wages for all the people who run the school. Expenses would be the costs of um, utilities, um, some maintenance, books, everything that help to bring in those revenues. So you see that revenues minus expenses give you profit, which we also call net income. So revenues 
or the sale of products and services. Expenses are the cost of getting those products, uh, uh, being able to sell those products and services. And revenues minus expenses equal net income. Now, another piece that you will be familiar with is called dividends. Dividends are just distributing profits to the stockholders. It's not um, an expense, but when individuals invest in a company, they want to see a return on their investment. They want to benefit from investing in a company. So companies provide dividends to those who own the company, a piece of the profits. Dividends are the distribution of profit to the, the shareholders, stockholders. So in its first month of business, this golf academy received $3,500 in revenues from lessons, meaning they earned $3,500 in revenues. But in order to make those revenues, they had various expenses. They had salaries of 1000 they had supplies of 500 and then various miscellaneous expenses of $750. So you see one of the first financial statements we're looking at is called the income statement. Here you see revenues of 3,500. And then there were expenses or costs to bring in those revenues. Salaries of a thousand, supplies of five hundred, and miscellaneous expenses of seven fifty. So, our revenues are at thirty five hundred. Our expenses totaled at two thousand two hundred and fifty. And our net income is 12.50. Does that make sense? Yep. Got it. Okay. So in this case, remember I to told you that what we're gonna do is we're going to take various activities and measure them. We measure them by placing them in various categories. The categories we're learning about right now, are they a, an asset, a resource of the company? Are they liabilities, people we owe money to? Is it a stockholder's equity, those people are, that are investing in the company? Is it a dividend, distributing money to shareholders? Or are we measuring selling products or services? That would be a revenue. Or is the activity something to do with expenses, cost of providing sales? So guys, we're gonna take each transaction and break it down and make it simple. We're gonna measure it. The categories we use to measure them will be, for now, these various um, categories such as assets, liabilities, stockholders' equity, dividends, revenues, and expenses. Now, I told you one of the most important things you're going to learn today is the accounting equation. The assets, the liabilities and the stockholders' equity are part of this accounting equation. If it's related to revenues and expenses, that's going to tell us our net income. Revenues and expenses are part of our net income, how we calculate that. 
Remember, the measurement role of accounting is to create a record of the activities of a company. In order to do this, companies have to maintain accurate record, records of its assets, liabilities, stockholders' equity, revenues, expenses, and of their dividends. So guys, who wants to take this one? You can unmute, read it, and tell me what you think. And guys, no, you're here because we're learning. So no answer is stupid. This is how we learn. So I don't want ever you to, to feel like if you made a wrong um, answer that something's wrong. This You're here because we're learning. Anyone want to take it? Would it be assets, C? Excellent. Excellent. The resources of a company are referred to as assets. I Perfect. Now, how about this one? The amounts recorded when the company sells products or provides services to customers are referred to as what? When we, the amounts, yeah, I'm sorry. Revenue. 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 Excellent. And it's revenues. When we sell products or provide services, they are referred to as revenues. Now, here's a little exercise for you. I'm going to let you just take a couple minutes and attempt this on your own. And let's see how familiar you are, and then we'll go over it. But what I'm trying to do here is just see if you're kind of getting the categories with the definition of each category. So take a couple minutes here, guys, while I go get myself another Diet Coke. Hold on. When a couple of you guys have completed it, why don't you just pipe in and say, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. Thanks, Ann. I'm done. Thank you. I'm done. Thanks, Tyler. Okay, guys. So assets, an example of an asset would be land owned by a company because land is a resource. Liabilities are amounts owed to the bank. 
stockholders equity would be common stock issued to investors. Dividends are payments made to the stockholders. Revenues would be cleaning services provided to customers. And expenses are worker salaries for the current period. Now, <clears throat> this, you're gonna have an ex, um, a homework problem just like this, guys, okay? So let's go over this. Um, again, I will, um, I will post this in the classroom so you can go over this lecture again and move it and start it to wherever you need. So this will help you. On December 31st, Fighting Okra Cooking Service reports the following revenues and expenses. So it's giving us revenues and various expenses. What we're gonna do it just now is to prepare an income statement. An income statement includes revenues and expenses. So our income statement will show service revenues of 75,000 and show all the expenses, salaries expense of 24,000, supplies expense of 14,500, rent expense of 10,600, legal fees expense of 2,400 and postage expense of 1,500. Do you guys see something common with all expenses? They have the word expense after them. The revenues generally will have the word revenue after it or sales after it. Our revenues minus our expenses give us our net income. We're not going to worry about this section yet. Know there are three primary business structures. Companies can utilize what's called a sole proprietorship. That's just, I decide I am going to start making quilts. And I just... I'm the only person that's doing it, and I start business as a single owner. More partnerships are generally when there's more than one owner, there's two or more owners of a company. And a corporation is really a legally, um, a legal entity that's separated by its owners. So while sole proprietorships make up the most number of businesses in the United States, it's the corporations that really perform percentage-wise most of the revenues. Another thing we're going to look at are various business activities. So you see chapter one is really a big umbrella of so many things we're covering. And then in future chapters, we're just going to start breaking all these down. Businesses, when they conduct activities, they're going to be lumped into one of these categories. I will tell you, most of the business activities of companies are going to be operating transactions as to why the company's in business. But there are financing activities and there are investing activities. Financing activities relate to any transactions the company conducts with investors and creditors. So when a company borrows money from a bank or pays the money back to the bank, that's going to be a financing activity. Or when a company receives money from investors in the form of stock. They receive cash in exchange for stock. That would be a financing activity. Investing activities only involve the purchase and sale 
of resources. That's it. And then operating activities would be everything else. Financing activities, issuing stock, borrowing money, investing activities, the purchase and sale of long-term assets, such as purchasing equipment, trucks, buildings, selling equipment, trucks, buildings, land. And then the operating activities involve everything else, purchasing inventory to sell, paying insurance, paying salaries, paying utilities, everything else. So this question, where there's transactions and we have to decide, is it a financing activity, investing or operating? I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to decide. Borrowing money from the bank, what is that? Providing services to customers, what is that? Take a couple minutes and try that, guys. Okay, so guys, when we borrow money from a bank, it's going to be a financing activity. When we provide services to customers, it's operating. When we issue stock to investors, that's financing. Purchasing land is investing. Paying rent for the current period is operating. When we pay dividends to stockholders, that has to do with financing, transactions related to the shareholders. And then purchasing a building would be investing. Does anyone have any questions regarding these? Does it make sense? Yep. Great. So transactions related to the primary business activities of the company, such as selling goods and services to customers, are referred to as operating activities. Transactions of a company that include the purchase and sale of long-term assets are investing activities, okay? So, guys, we're covering a lot. Hang in there. You're doing great. So now we are taking various transactions and determining what category do they go into? And what we do is we take these various transactions we're compiling and we're going to prepare income statements and balance sheets and statement of cash flows and statement of stockholders equity. These, this form we use to communicate is through what we call financial statements. 
the four primary financial statements include the income statement, the statement of stockholders' equity, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. The income statement that we kind of looked at just earlier reports the company's revenues and expenses over a certain period of time. Now, you want revenues to be greater than expenses because then you have net income. That's a good thing. Sometimes when companies start, their revenues are going to be less than their expenses. But a company can't stay in business for a long time when their revenues are less than their expenses. But an income statement compares revenues and expenses for the current period. And we're either going to have a net income where our revenues are greater than our expenses or a net loss when our expenses are greater than our revenues. So for the Eagle Golf Academy, you see their revenues are 7,200. They have all their expenses and their net income is gonna be their revenues minus their total expenses or net income of $1,200. Okay. Now, the statement of stockholders' equity is summarizing any changes that happen with stockholders' equity over the period of usually a year. Stockholders' equity includes the common stock, people that, um, investors that purchase stock. And it also includes what we call retained earnings. And retained earnings comes from within the company. Common stock are the investors' contributions in exchange for shares of stock. Retained earnings is the net income that the company supplies because of either having revenues greater than expenses, or if they have a net loss, that also affects our retained earnings along with dividends. So in this example, this is a brand new company. So we started out with zero balance. During the month, we issued common stock for 25,000. So our issuance of common stock increased our stockholders equity by 25,000. Okay. Then we add our net income for the period. That's an internal source that we call retained earnings. When we pay dividends, we reduce our retained earnings. Remember, dividends are needed because investors who invest in the company want a piece of the pie. Since they're providing us with their resources, their cash to come into the company, they're gonna want some benefit from um, investing in the company. So at the end of December 31st, you see our common stock balance is 25,000. Our retained earnings consists of the net income of 1,200 minus the 200 in dividends we paid out. So total stockholders equity is a combination of common stock, 
and retained earnings. The balance sheet is a really, I mean, all four of these financial statements are critical. They all provide information in different ways. But the balance sheet is the same thing as the accounting equation, guys. The balance sheet represents the financial position on a particular date in time, usually at the very end of the period, end of the year, end of the month, end of the quarter. And it's going to show exactly the assets of a company. And it's going to show they balance with liabilities and stockholders' equity, or what we call the claims to those resources. Remember that a balance sheet is just a picture at one point in time. So on December 31st, we will see exactly what our assets are, what our liabilities are, what our stockholders' equity would be. And then on January 1st, one transaction is going to change it. It's just a snapshot. Okay? So this particular exercise helps us to look at some um, transactions, activities, and we're going to go, okay, let's talk about this. Is this a revenue? Is this an expense? Is this an asset or a resource? Is this a liability or a payable? Or is this stockholders equity? And then we'll talk about what kind of activity is it? Is it operating? Is it investing? Is it financing? Okay, so when we've got Falcon purchases common stock of Wildcat, what's happening here is Falcon's a company and Falcon is choosing to purchase an investment in another company. This is where basically Falcon is taking its resources and investing in another company. So this is a long-term asset, an investment into another company. Whenever they use long-term assets to buy or sell, it is going to be a um, investing activity. So the account that we use to record this investment, it's called an investment, it's an asset. And the activity is an investing activity. When Falcon borrows from Wildcat by signing a note, so now Falcon is borrowing money instead of from a bank, it's borrowing from another company. The account is going to be called notes payable. Whenever we see an account that says payable, we know that it's going to be a liability. It's we're getting a benefit today, but we owe them the money down the road. So what's happening here? The note payable, the category is a liability. And the activity is financing. We're borrowing money. Then when Wildcat pays dividends to Falcon, and Falcon receives some revenues, dividend revenues from it, this is an operating activity because this is probably why Falcon's in business is to invest in other companies and make money. And dividend revenue is a revenue category. When Falcon provides services to Wildcat, the account is called service revenue. Again, that's an operating activity. 
And that's why the company's in business. When Falcon pays interest to Wildcat because it borrowed money, the account is called interest expense. That would be an expense category and the activity would be operating. So what we're doing here is really taking each transaction or activity and really breaking it apart to decide what are we gonna call this and what category does it fit under? So now you see after Eagle Golf has been in business for a month, the assets equal 40,000. We've got our cash, accounts receivable, which we'll talk about in a little bit, supplies, equipment, and other assets. And we owe different people money or different uh, situations. And then we have our stockholders equity. But do you see here, our assets of 40,000 will equal our liabilities of 14,000 plus our stockholders equity of 26,000, okay? This is a balance sheet. It shows that our resources, our assets will equal the claims to those resources, the liabilities plus the stockholders equity. Guys, which of the following accounts would appear in a company's income statement? Remember, an income statement is revenues minus expenses. Wouldn't it be rent expense? Remember, an income statement is a financial statement that shows revenues and expenses over a period of time. Accounts payable would be a liability in the balance sheet. Cash is a resource called an asset. Dividends are in the statement of stockholders equity. Which relationship is reflected in the balance sheet? I'm going to let someone answer this one. B. Awesome. Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. Now, there's another financial statement, keeping track of how we receive cash and how we use up cash over a period of time. Do you remember we talked about those three types of activities? Operating, is why the company's in business. And that's gonna be cash transactions involving revenues and expenses. Investing cash flows are only cash transactions involving the purchase and sale of long-term assets. And financing activities are cash flows involve cash transactions involving lenders and stockholders. So the statement of cash flows only deals with cash received or used 
under these separate activities. So here you see the statement of cash flows for Eagle Golf Academy. It shows the money coming in from um, providing golf lessons and the money going out for expenses. It shows the money going out for purchasing equipment. And then for financing, it shows the money that came in from the shareholders and money that came in from the bank minus the money we paid to the shareholders in the form of dividends. So that cash at the end of the period, that 6,900 cash at the end of the period there is what we have in cash at the end of the month and of the year. So in this example, these, this tiger trade has these various transactions and it shows us the various activities, cash received from the sale of products to customers. We know that would be an operating activity, wouldn't it? Cash received from the bank from a long-term loan, that's borrowing money from a bank that would be a financing activity. To purchase factory equipment, the purchase and sale of long-term assets will be investing. Paid, cash paid to merchandise suppliers, operating while we're in business. Cash received from the sale of an unused warehouse, long-term asset, investing. Cash paid to workers and to that was paid for advertising, that would be operating. Why the company's in business, those are costs of running a business. Cash received for the sale of services to customers, operating. And then cash paid for dividends to stockholders, that's gonna be financing. Since we are, providing dividends to those um, stockholders, that is a financing activity. So if we have cash at the beginning of the period of 5,000 and we show money that's come in, money that's gone out, the cash we would show at the end of the period would be 37,000. We started with five, we add cash received, products to customers, bank loans, what we paid out purchasing a factory, paying for merchandise suppliers, um, we received money from an unused warehouse. So it, it's cash is either coming in, we're receiving it, or we're spending it. At the end, we have an ending balance here of 37000 In order to create a cash flow statement or a statement of cash flows from that information, all we're doing is separating them into activities. So our operating activity section is why the company's in business. So we would show monies coming in from the sale of products to customers and of services to customers. And then the monies going out would be to help run the, you know, the cost of providing those revenues buying merchandise, paying money for salaries and for advertising. So what we do there is we show the cash coming in minus the cash going out and our net cash flows from just the operating activities, here's 30,000. 
For investing activities, it's purchasing equipment and selling equipment. So we've spent 50,000 to buy equipment. We received 13,000 for selling a warehouse. So we've got net cash flows there of minus 37,000. And then from financing activities, we borrowed money from a bank, we paid dividends, net cash flows from financing in this period, 39,000. So it, as you see here, you take the net cash flows from operating of 30, the negative net cash flows from investing, 37, plus our financing, 39, and the net throughout the period is thir a plus 32,000. We show what we began the year by or the month, 5,000. We take the changes throughout the year of the 32 plus what we started the year with, a five, shows cash at the end of the year is 37. Okay. Now, in this example, what we can do is we've got information regarding the balance sheet. We have information regarding the statement of cash flows. And we can create a balance sheet. So as you see here, our assets Cash is 7,700. All these are resources. Supplies we haven't used up yet, 1,800. There's a new word that we'll talk about, I believe next week, prepaid insurance, which is an asset. I'll just say it's insurance that's been paid up front. We haven't used up yet. So it's a resource, 3,500 and a building of 72,000. If we take those resources are what we call assets. The total assets are 85,000. We know our assets are always gonna equal our liabilities plus our stockholders equity. We see here that our liabilities, accounts payable, salaries payable, notes, payable. Are you guys getting a, a trend here? Liabilities, apart from one liability we'll talk about next week, will always have the word payable. So we have three liabilities here, which total 33200 Then we have our common stock and our retained earnings. So our Liabilities plus our stockholders' equity equal 85,000. Do you guys see our assets equal our liabilities plus our stockholders' equity? Okay. Then we can take the information provided to us back here, and it shows inflows, cash inflows, and cash outflows. The cash inflows from customers, which would be operating activities. When we borrow money from a bank, that's financing activities. And when we have sales of investments, that's investing activities. The outflows, anything to do with why the company's in business would be operating activities such as employee salaries and supplies. Outflows of dividends would be for financing, paying the shareholders some dividends. And then when we purchase a building, 
It's an investing activity. Remember, investing activities are the purchase and the sale of long-term assets. So here you see the statement of cash flows. And all we're doing is we're breaking it into various categories. You see, here are the four financial statements. Do you see the income statement is the first financial statement we will prepare? We need that net income in order to figure out or finish the statement of stockholders' equity. You have to have that net income in order to compute the statement of stockholders' equity. We have to have the total statement of stockholders' equity completed before we can plug in the balance sheet because the balance sheet needs the total stockholders' equity, which we'll get from the statement of stockholders' equity. And the balance sheet, the cash amount shown on the balance sheet will always equal the statement of cash flows at the end of the period. So what this is showing you guys is the, the relationship among the various financial statements. They all come together. They all relate and relate to one another. Any questions? I know there's so much recovering today. Does anyone have questions? Now, I will tell you, most of your homework is just going to be like what we're covering here. Each of these situations represents amounts shown on financial statements. Number one, if revenues are 27,000 and expenses are 18,000, what would that make our net income, guys? Would it be 9,000? It'd be 9,000 there. That's part of the income statement. If we have an increase in stockholders' equity of 17,000 and we have issuance of common stock for 11 and our net income is 12, what would be our dividends? So if we know we increased our balance, 17,000 for the year, we can calculate what our dividends were because right now, if we show our net income to be 12, we had to have paid dividends of 6,000 in order to get an ending balance here in our retained earnings. Because the 11 plus the 6,000 give us our total stockholders' equity here of 17. If assets equal 24,000, stockholders' equity equals 15, what do the liabilities have to equal? They have to equal nine, don't they? Because assets will always equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. And then our statement of cash flows, if our total change in cash is 26,000, and it tells us our operating cash flows are 34, our net investing cash flows are a minus 17,000. 
what do our financing cash flows have to be? They have to be 9,000 in order to have an increase in cash of 26. Guys, remember, all transactions that affect revenues or expenses are reported in the income statement. Ultimately, it's gonna affect the balance sheet through the balance in retained earnings. Now, this last section really just focuses on decision-making. We know we need financial information to make decisions. So will individuals in the public choose to put their money into company A or company B? It's going to be in these financial statements that they help make decisions. How is that? Well, let's just say one company has a lot of debt. Another company doesn't have as much debt. That may be a decision um, or a factor in how individuals choose to spend their money. Or if their income keeps getting reduced from one year to the next. That would show up in the income statement and that might make the decision as to investors choosing to invest in one company versus another due to lack of growth. Does that make sense? How they take this information and use it to make decisions. So basically, uh, I think they're just showing here that the stock market has been going gangbusters lately. I mean, it's this year has been a tough one, but um, over the years, it's definitely a way to invest your money. One thing you'll be aware of as you read the chapter, accountants must utilize certain parameters or rules. And in the United States, generally accepted accounting principles, or we call it GAAP, are what we use in order to prepare the financial statements accordingly. GAAP gives us the information we need to know how various transactions need to be recorded. So it is with generally accepted accounting principles that we try to prepare our financial statements all in a similar fashion. GAP is the organization or, or the rules that determine how we all must prepare financial statements in a similar manner, the standards. In the United States, when there are public companies, the Security and Exchange Commission monitors those companies. And we have an independent organization called the Financial Accounting Standards Board that set the guidelines for how the financial statements need to be handled, which ultimately the Securities Exchange Commission protect, um, uh, governs it. Again, when a company has the ability to trade their shares to the public, they have a responsibility to make sure they are in accordance with the Securities Exchange Commission. From an international standpoint, we have the International Accounting Standards Board 
that sets the guidelines, which is different from FASB. No, the rules are called GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. The independent body that has the responsibility for establishing these rules is the FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board. I'm going to let you look at the role of the auditors um, on your own. You know, just look at some of those um, things at the end and in the accounting profession, what, um, what kind of jobs are out there. Um, I want you, you guys can take a look at that and look at these various um, characteristics of preparing financial statements. I'm going to just let you kind of have a moment to look at those. Um, so there was a lot we covered here today. The focus is on taking transactions and measuring them and deciding what category do they go into and how much. And then once we take these various transactions, we then can prepare financial statements. Does anyone have any questions before I end this lecture and then I go over the um, homework for you? Any questions at all, guys? Well, you guys take care. I'm going to end this lecture and um, post this.